Welcome to the original land of make-believe. From Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tales to 21st century Nordic noir thrillers, Denmark tells a compelling story. Yet for many travellers, it remains something of a mystery. The mainland chunk of Denmark is easy to reach with an abundance of attractions in a compact area. Within an hour of Jutland's airport, Billund, the traveller is rewarded with great scenery, intriguing towns and a pervasive sense of style. I want to help unlock this beautiful country, starting here in southern Jutland, with my top 10 places. The first of which is the hotel whose jetty I'm presently sitting on. The Hotel Koldingfjord overlooks Jutland's exquisite Baltic coast on the edge of a village. No, more of a hamlet. To live like a prince of Denmark, this is the place. A room with a view and a chef with a quest. Matthias invited me to join him, searching for wild herbs in the forest above the hotel. What is this? It's a uh, ramson. It's an uh, onion family. Um, wild, uh, wild onion. It tastes like uh, garlic. Ah. If you want to taste. Oh, just and, and like this. The smell. Mmm. I can't wait to eat the results. Thank you. Fantastic. Look at this. Perfect. This is where the flavours of the forest meet the freshest seafood and make me very happy. We have a lot of things to offer here. The art museums, the castles, the nature, and uh, of course also the wonderful Scandinavian food. So we keep it as a secret, but you're welcome. Almost next door to the hotel infused with style, a museum that celebrates good taste. Elegance, simplicity, playfulness. No, not me, Danish design, celebrated here at the Trappold Museum. Denmark wrote the book on great design and here's where it comes to life. You might say that many Danes are concerned about design and in Danish households you will find a lot of design. And that goes back in history, all the way back to the 20s and 40s where we created a whole policy about design. And in this policy people were concerned, concerned about how we live, whether we have a good furniture in our households and they would also have a financial program so that people could loan money in order to get proper furniture in the households. Koldingfjord ends at the town of Kolding, dominated by Koldinghus, a castle that became a ruin that's been skillfully resurrected. In the restoration we have acknowledged that Koldinghus is still a ruin and we have not tried to, to, to make it look anything like a ruin. We have uh, put roof on, we have closed the walls uh, and made the interior as a museum, but in the exterior it's still a ruinous castle. Yelling is the spiritual heart of Denmark, where the nation was united and Christianity took root. The runic stones at Yelling are part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site that celebrates the creation of Danish nationhood. At the same location, there's the country's first Christian church, in which 12th century frescoes have survived the march of time. The man who started it all, Harold Bluetooth, whose name was later appropriated for an internet function that stopped the online world being all at sixes and sevens. Six gears? You probably won't be needing them. With great respect to Denmark, this isn't exactly Bradley Wiggins territory. The highest point in the whole country is barely a pimple on the relief map of Europe, which is a relief to those of us who just want a gentle cycle ride on traffic-free paths. Denmark has an excellent network of cycle paths. This one along the west coast of Jutland is also part of the North Sea cycle route that runs along the shores of the countries that surround the sea. But two wheels can take you more or less anywhere in Jutland, including over the causeway to the serene island of Remu. And the best place to cycle to is the beautiful town of Riba, the oldest in Denmark. And guess what? Look at the time, 27 minutes to 2, or 13.33. And 13.33 was when this, the 
commoner's tower was completed. It gives an amazing 360 degree view of pretty much the whole of southern Denmark, which isn't exactly alpine. Indeed, there's a saying here, which is that if you see a hare or a rooster start running, you'll still be able to see it two weeks later. Riebe is Denmark's oldest town with the nation's oldest cathedral, the Domkirke, built from tufa stone imported from Germany. The cathedral stands at the heart of a town comprised of crooked, cobbled streets built on Viking foundations and untroubled by modernity. To get a flavour of the ancient inns that flourished here, visit Weisse Stue, which, like the rest of the town, bears the weight of the centuries elegantly and rewards the visitor hungry for culture or cuisine. Here's your fish plate, sir. Lovely. Also known as the entire contents of the North Sea. Thank you. And as the shadows begin to lengthen, the Night Watchman Tour begins, led by Sven Pedersen with military precision. Let's go. You can imagine an old medieval town with a very, very dark and narrow street where a rascal could easily come forward and uh, harm uh, innocent people. So, of course, they were satisfied and very pleased when they saw the lamp swinging and when they heard the night watchman singing, then they could get home in, in safety, of course. Next up is a concept, hygge, a Danish term which doesn't have an exact meaning in other languages, but is most often translated as cosy. To test it, I've come to the town of Velia, about 20 minutes east of Billund Airport, and to the cafe that bills itself as the oldest and the cosiest in town. The name is Den Gamle Arrest, the old prison, which was the previous uncomfortable occupation. But today it's just the place for a cosy chat with the bar staff. Hygge is relaxing. It just doesn't care about anything else other than just Hygge. Right now in here we got Hygge, like people are sitting sharing a meal, they're having a beer, talking a lot, drinking coffee afterwards. It's just relaxing and find the time to, to forget about the world outside basically. Far from cosy, but an equally important Danish experience, wander to the Wadden Sea, don some attractive waders and wander a kilometre or so offshore on an oyster safari. Between October and April, you can hunt for fresh bivalve mollusks beneath vast skies. About two minutes ago, it was sitting on the seabed, minding its own business. Now it's my breakfast. Out here, the oyster is your world. Mmm, a bit of ice, a bit of sand, and an absolutely delicious taste. That is the freshest thing I have ever eaten. It's one of the most producing nature areas in the world. We are up top three for migration birds. We have about 15 million migration birds are coming through. So that's fantastic. Many of the birds are eating 1,000 mussels a day. So. The numbers out here is amazing. It's like walking on a watery moon, but don't try this at high tide. Butter, bacon, beer, to the list of great Danish icons exported around the planet, you must add bricks, billions of them. Many to be found down the back of sofas around the world. It was here in Billund that Lego was born and it's the home of the world's very first Lego, created in 1968 and still in the 21st century, my top tip for a great time in Denmark. The final brick in the wall of the 10 best things to see in and around Billund is the first theme park inspired by a toy. Legoland brings out your inner child and makes you the new kid on the block. If you can arrange to stay at the on-site hotel, you get a room with a story and a special entrance direct to the park. Possibly the best theme park in the world. Well, that's for you to decide. But Legoland is a good place to end your stay with a great day in the company of Great Danes. 
and Denmark is a country that will offer you all kinds of experiences you simply can't find anywhere else. In just two minutes I've collected all these but remember an oyster isn't just for Christmas it's for breakfast. Ha <laughs> ha!